When I first discovered the Hendrix chord, I couldn't believe that just four notes could sound so rich and delicious. What is it that makes one chord smooth and consonant, another lush, and another spicy and dissonant? Let's start to answer that with a Socratic simplicity and only the assumption that consonants and dissonance involves pitches and their relationship. So let's just start with a continuous line of pitches. Forget all we know about music theory and just start with one frequency and play another against it and search along this pitch line to find areas of consonance and dissonance. The resulting dissonance curve depends on register, timbre, loudness, the listener training and the harmonic context, but tends to look something like this. With peaks of dissonance and valleys of consonance, particularly at harmonic ratios, it seems in general that the simpler the ratio, the more consonant, and more complex ratios are more dissonant. We also find peaks of dissonance between these harmonic ratios and within a critical bandwidth of the most consonant ratios, suggesting, for example, that a major third is more pitch flexible than a root, which is more consonant but more sharply defined. As musicians, we can use any part of this curve and we shouldn't confuse consonants and dissonance with good and bad. They are just different flavors how do we choose which ones to use? Well, we can decide to select from many harmonic ratios. Or keep things simple and use just 12 divisions of the octave. Where do the 12 divisions lie with respect to this curve? Here they are in an increasing order of dissonance. This gives us a similar but more constrained curve with lower highs and higher lows in exchange for the beautiful transformations that tempered systems offer. Harmonic ratios and equal divisions do sound different. A major triad built on equal temperament compared to simple harmonic ratios. However we place these 12 notes, this curve aligns pretty well with compositional practice and teaching. Here's Persichetti's descriptions of the intervals. Note that we have sharp dissonances on minor second and on the major seventh, mild dissonances on the major second and minor seventh. And this mirror roughly continues. the restless tritone in the centre. This mirror form is embraced by musical set theory and its interval classes. In pitch class set theory, we can essentially dispense with octaves and so all pitches can belong on a clock face. Intervals now become the shortest distance between two note names or pitch classes. That gives us just a handful of interval classes. Interval class zero includes all the unisons and octaves, whilst interval class one includes minor seconds and major sevenths and any octave displacements. These have a hard or sharp dissonance. Interval class two are major seconds, minor sevenths, and their octave displacements, producing a soft dissonance. Interval class three is minor thirds and major sixths, which have a soft, open consonant sound. Interval class four, major thirds and minor sixths, which have a different flavor of soft consonants. Interval class five, fifths and perfect fourths, which are stable and consonant. 
and interval class six triturns, which often have a floaty restlessness. These interval classes we can think of as flavours, giving each chord its own unique flavour profile and spiciness. But a chord has many intervals within it. How many? Imagine notes in a chord as guests at a dinner party, clinking glasses. The more guests, the more times you have to clink. And the more notes in a chord, the more intervals. But how many? Well, here's the formula. N times N minus one over two, where N is the number of notes in a chord. So let's say a triad or a three note chord. Three times two divided by two, which is three. Three intervals. For a four note chord, four times three divided by two, six intervals. A five note chord has 10. And so on. So these interval classes can be seen as vertices on any chords we can imagine. This flavour profile is described in what's called an interval vector here. With the more dissonant and unstable interval classes on the outer edges and softer consonants in the middle. This works beautifully if we compare, for example, the Japanese traditional scale Yo to its beautiful dark counterpart, the In scale. Notice how those 10 intervals are now spread to the spicier outer edges. We could even assign a spiciness value to each of the interval classes. A harmonic Scoville scale or Schofield scale. And whilst it's reductive to use a linear measure for such multi-dimensional flavour, it works surprisingly well. Let's compare a major six chord to major seven. The introduction of the semitone clash, adding a little spice, or minor seven to minor six, where the tritone had some flavor. So we can see consonants and dissonance as this internal flavouring. We can also see that the humble diatonic scale actually contains all the interval classes. Now it's possible to play through a major scale using just soft consonants. If we really want to pull flavour from it, we can explore a pandiatonicism which embraces the spicier interval classes with chords such as these. We can see how the whole tone scale filters out half the interval classes and how the octatonic has an even richness. Considering harmony from the perspective of its intervallic content greatly expands our vocabulary and opportunities for artistic expression. It also allows us to ask questions like how efficiently can we represent all these interval classes? 
is it possible to get this intervallic variety with a simple elegant? Well, it turns out you can get all six interval classes with just four notes. They're called all interval tetrachords for obvious reasons. For example, this shape, which I call the Phrygian tetrachord. Or its reflection, its upside down version, the Lydian tetrachord. There's also another shape that produces all six interval classes. The octatonic tetrachord. And can we guess what its reflection is? None other than the Hendrix chord. Demonstrating the endless connections between objective truths and musical experience. <laughs>